Stay tuned and let's check out this Marvel Legends Wolverine 50th Anniversary 2 pack with Wolverine and Mandarin Psylocke. Pow and welcome back to the channel Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And remember now you can hit that join button and become a channel member as well. Either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. Today, the celebration of Wolverine's 50th anniversary continues as we have another Marvel Legends 2-pack. This time, it is the Mandarin Psylocke, or Psylocke in her Mandarin armor, and then the less exciting Samurai Wolverine, who we have technically already had in the Marvel Legends line during that first wave of orange X-Men retro cards, but it has been upgraded. Of course, we'll do a full comparison, but the main event is, of course, Psylocke. Now, there's no disputing this is an epic-looking Marvel Legends, but I would have selfishly probably preferred in my collection the Outback Armor Psylock or even the first appearance of Betsy. But as I said, she looks great and there's some potential reuse for maybe a Death Bird. So this is how they have to get there. I'm all game for it. Some new effect pieces, maybe two heads. Even Wolverine comes with two heads, so that's nice to see. I do really like the packaging with the Wolverine logo. And then you get the 50 years logo up top with Wolverine and Psylock. On the back of the box, you can see this comic art, which is actually going to be a comic you can buy a variant cover at some point this year so look out for them i like that we get the inspiration for these character designs as well as it tells you the artist but it doesn't actually tell you what those comic book covers are so i will it is uncanny x-men 256 that's the one with the mandarin on the front and uncanny x-men 257 where the battle with wolverine and psylocke essentially continues if you want to see more and understand why she is wearing that armor go and read those comics people there's also a little write-up that says wielding the 10 rings and newly acquired Acquired ninja skills, Psylocke engages Wolverine in a telepathic battle for control. So this one looks very, very nice. Let's get them out the box. Here we have them out of the packaging with their accessories on the table. And it's nice to see that they both come with an interchangeable head and also a few pieces. Now, Wolverine obviously only comes with a set of unbladed hands, but Psylocke seems to come with some new effect pieces, which are very rare in Marvel Legends. Usually we just get reused, different colors, but these seem new. She also comes with some interchangeable hands, her psionic blade, which debuted during this gear. And then she's got more of an evil head scanner. Can I just say, before I even zoom in, both of the head sculpts on both of these figures are really, really nice. And you'll see what I mean when we take a closer look. So let's do exactly that. Uh, and we'll do it one by one. And since it's Wolverine's 50th birthday, let's start with him. Focusing on Wolverine then, as you would expect, he is smaller than your average legend at under six inches in height, which is accurate for Wolverine. And this figure is more upgraded than I initially thought in comparison to the previous release. So this actually has the upgraded pinless arms and legs. If I bring in the previous version here, you'll see that obviously the outfits are exactly the same, but there are some differences. So let's zoom in. Apart from the obvious one is pinless and one is not, there are some aesthetic differences as well. The skin tone is lighter on the new one and the application of the hairy arms is a little bit different, more natural looking on the new one as well. Uh, the old one had glossy boots compared to the matte finish on the new one. Again, one's pinless, one's not. The new one does not have a belt buckle for the red sort of waist. The old one did have a belt buckle. The old one also had gripping hands so it could hold the black samurai sword it comes with. With. The new one does not come with gripping hands or a samurai sword, but it does have very nice head sculpts. The old one had a more angry screaming expression with the sort of smoky eyes, uh, which is accurate to this design. So I guess between the two, you could cobble together your preferred look for samurai Wolverine. So I'll farm on the rotating base for a second, just so you can see how they look. The articulation is basically the same. I've done it off camera, even though the pinless tech is there, probably a little bit better, but overall decent enough. But I'm rambling just while they spin for a second. The main event are the new head sculpts for this Samurai Wolverine. As their head sculpts, you could probably pop on other Marvel Legends, which is great just to have that option to upgrade some past releases. So let's check them out. So the first head sculpt I'm gonna call Moody Wolverine as he definitely doesn't look happy, but look at the depth and the detail in that digital face print in tech. It honestly looks like it could be based off an actual real person rather than uh, a 2D comic book page, but it does look really nice. You can even see that five o'clock shadow for Wolverine as well. And there's definitely some blue highlights in his hair. Before spinning around though, I should mention 
mentioned that this new Wolverine also has the skin around the sort of collar uh, where the previous version was black all the way up to the neck. So there are a difference between the paint on the upper torsos as well, which I might not have previously mentioned. But anyway, back to the head and I'll spin it round so you can see the sideburns go all the way down. See a little bit of that five o'clock shadow with blue highlights in the hair as well. And the hair wisps out to the side with some nice sculpted detail. But the hair is jet black otherwise from that blue. Uh, but yeah, that is our, our angry expression Wolverine with those piercing eyes. And there's even some sort of veins and creases above his eyebrows as well. But we also have, shall we dub this the cocky expression for Wolverine? As he definitely seems a little bit more sure of himself there with a little bit of a smirk appearing as well as the cocked eyebrow. And you can actually see a little bit of the hair coming over the forehead as well, which makes me think there are some differences to the hair sculpt, but otherwise still has the blue highlights and then the long sideburns flaring out to the side as well as the two points, of course, which is trademark. Again, otherwise all black. Again, both heads on the disc and hinge of course they are so we can look up down swivel etc but uh, yeah i really like the sense of depth here with the digital face printing tech and the sort of uh again the, the five o'clock shadow let's look at them both side by side so you can see what i mean you've got definitely a grumpier angry wolverine straight out the box and then the alternative head is a little bit more sure of himself with that sort of slight appearance of a smirk and again the hair looks similar but there are a little bit of differences even if it is just a little bit of hair uh, on the fringe but even still nice to have those two different expressions and i'm sure we could pop these heads on other marvel legends but in case you were wondering then yes of course you can pop the old head on the new body so you can have a more angry Wolverine. And he does actually have the smoky eyes in this costume when he's fighting Psylocke, at least in a couple of panels, it seems that way. So I'm sure between the two, you can pick your preference. Before we move on, of course, bringing some attention to these terrible claws. Let's be honest and send a message to the universe. Let's never see these again. These get warped and they can never really look great when posing. All of these are individually plugged into the actual hand. And then sometimes they just stick out and they're just warped. And yeah, they're never great. Very fiddly. I do like that they've painted the actual bits on the floor on metal though those gauntlets are a separate piece as well but uh yeah we've got better claws in the marvel legends library now to use these but uh yeah they are old school we can definitely do better but in case you don't want the claws we do of course have a set of interchangeable fisted hands and apart from the head that's all you get. And I honestly wanted to finish by swapping out the gripping hands on the old one, which hold the sword, and plug them into the new one. But because they've switched out the arms, the peg now for the hands is just smaller. So unless you dremel out that hole on the hands, you're not actually going to be able to use the old gripping hands uh, like I initially thought. Also, the little wrist gauntlets that uh, are a separate piece are different on the old one, they're a little bit thicker on the old one compared to the new one. Again, tiny detail. Uh, but yeah, you can't swap out the gripping hands without a little bit of modding. So yeah, you can only swap the head between the two, unfortunately. So uh, in case you wanted him to hold a sword, uh, he can't. And just to further prove my point, the advantage of Wolverine having such unique anatomy means that Hasbro reused that same torso mold over and over again, and they've all got the same neck peg. So you can switch and pop their heads to your heart's content. So here we have the two new Samurai Wolverine heads on two random previous Marvel Legend Wolverines. We've got the X-Force and then the Love Triangle Tiger stripe i think either way you can pop the heads of course you can and because of the scent for depth and the added detail on these new head sculpts it does sort of enhance them you've just got to find a wolverine where the skin tones match a little bit better than that tiger stripe version for example but it works nicely on the x-force but anyway go wild and again this isn't every marvel legends wolverine my table is honestly not big enough for that but here's a lot of them anyway a lot of tiger stripes a bit of x-force a bit of uncanny x-men we've got a weapon x back there and of course front and center the brand new samurai wolverine Wolverine. For the one guy in the comments that was about to complain I didn't do this head swap, here you go. It is the recent Uncanny X-Men Angry Expression Wolverine uh, on this samurai body, so you can give him a little bit of attitude, but the skin tones don't exactly work, unfortunately. But again, so much head swap potential. Also, that Amazon exclusive Wolverine five pack from the topless Wolverine works on this body if you want to get him posed up like he's been beaten up by Psylocke. And one last Wolverine comparison for now. Here we have the other variant Wolverine we have already reviewed on the channel from these recent 50th anniversary two packs. It is, of course, the Brood Wolverine. And look how much better his claws are compared to the Samurai Wolverine. Honestly, the longer I have this, the more I like it. Go and check out my review 
review of that Lalandra 2 pack on the channel right now. Really solid Wolverine. Let's get to the main event, which is of course Psylocke in this Mandarin armor. I talked about Wolverine for far too long. This is what the people want to see because first impressions, she genuinely does look really, really good. She comes with a nice array of accessories as well. We will look at further, but first let me get the tape measure out. She is six and three quarter inches to the top of the point on her helmet and just aesthetically looks really nice and pretty accurate to the source material. If I throw up an image, you can see what I mean, it does look very nice. You could nitpick and say maybe the arm should have all been chrome rather than the blue forearms, but they've chose aesthetics over thought of function here as that cape is glued on and it's sort of hard enough to hold its shape, which will limit some of the articulation, but I still think she's going to look great on display and you can still get her posed up, which we will find out. But if you are asking the question, Dan, why is Psylocke wearing this Mandarin armor? Well, in 1989's The Uncanny X-Men 250 we first see Lady Mandarin. We now obviously know it's Betsy Braddock as she was kidnapped by the hand who brainwashed her and switched the bodies with an East Asian assassin. Under the name of Lady Mandarin, she works for, obviously, the Mandarin as his right-hand supreme assassin. It's only after psychic contact with Wolverine she regains her free will, but is left with new skills and this new appearance. So if you know anything about Psylocke, you know her backstory is a bit complicated. She switches bodies, uh, and but this is the first appearance of that switched body in this armor, uh, and it is a very nice looking version of Psylocke. As I said at the start though, I would still want Outback, and I still want first appearance Betsy, UK repping and all that. But uh, anyway, let's take a closer look. So the first head sculpt we're gonna call the neutral look. This is where you can actually see the pupils of her eyes. Again, really nice eye makeup here. They've done a great job with the digital face printing tech. You've got the pale skin, and then that dark her red lips as well. Honestly, she does look really nice in hand. And then the purple hair is the perfect shade of purple with the fringe sort of hanging over the helmet and then the rest of it trailing off. And it does have some black wash throughout the sculpt of the hair as well. So it's just overall, honestly, a really solid head sculpt. If I spin it all the way around here, you can see the action pose of the purple hair sort of coming off to the side. And then you can see the dark uh, black elements of that sculpt, but otherwise a nice shade of purple. And then the mask is obviously Obviously, the helmet is firmly attached there. And there is a bit of articulation, even with all this neck piece. You can still swivel it, of course you can. Get her looking up a tiny bit, like I'm talking about a tiny bit, because her hair gets caught on the cape. Uh, and of course, it's on a dumbbell, I think, so she can look down a little bit. You get a bit of tilt as well. So yeah, there's definitely a dumbbell there. But either way, face sculpt, first one, looks really nice. The second head sculpt has a very sinister look with that grin and the whited out eyes. This is definitely the brainwashed version of Psylocke, but it does the trick. Honestly, looks really, really nice. The hair sculpt is exactly the same as the other one. It is just the facial expression behind the mask or the helmet is really nice. That's the difference. Otherwise, the two heads are exactly the same all the way around. So I'll throw up a side by side, but again, we're only focusing on really the expressions on the face. That is the difference between the two heads. Otherwise, hair, helmet, are the same. It's just the expression. You want brainwashed or the neutral look? Let me know your favorite in the comments. So as I've mentioned, you won't be able to remove the cape as it is glued at this upper torso, but I do like the added shaded detail they've put in all of the creases here for the cape in the black that is sort of swung over one shoulder. So you can see it swung over one shoulder and sort of sticks out this side and it is done in a nice hard blue plastic so it will hold its shape. And it's not too heavy to make a back heavy. If I lift that up, you'll see what I mean. It's literally only glued to the top of the torso. That reveals some of the detail on her samurai right armor uh, she's got that one shoulder that sticks all the way up you've got the chrome sort of brooch as well i guess that's sort of where it's keyed in uh, she's got some more samurai armor on her shoulder it's done in different layers so you've got that blue armor piece on the shoulder which does unfortunately hinder the arm going all the way up to 90. it wants to go there's just not enough room underneath there for that excess plastic to go up but it, it could if you forced it go to 90. you have of course got full range of the double jointed elbows, pinless as well, by the way, no complaints there. You got the nice chrome with the black lines in the sculpt as well. Again, nitpick, the arms could have been fully chrome, but to be fair to Hasbro, they could have been fully blue as well, depending on what comic book page you're looking at. Either way, they're both a little bit metallic-y, so that's a minor, minor thing. The arms, uh, the hands are blue with a little bit of black 
on the gloves uh, and you do get two fisted hands out of the packaging to beat up Wolverine. You've got the blue sort of breastplate and then you've got the blue sort of crotch piece that dangles over. Doesn't hinder the articulation. You've already seen the nice sort of detail on a skirt piece. Again, these are separate pieces which will come up and out the way for our leg articulation. You've got some nice chrome detail. Again, it's a nice shiny chrome with the black sort of wash in all of the creases and sculpted work. So they do stand out really nice. A little bit of gappage on my thigh cut, but you can see the thigh swivel there. Legs will go really far out to be fair to her, which you want for a samurai. And then she's got the double jointed pinless knees, which are always nice to see. And the knees don't look too awkward either. No boot cut of course, but she's got ankle pivot and rocker. Again, you can get the legs out about that far from the side. So about standard Marvel Legend range to be fair. Like that's not too bad, is it? So you can definitely get her into some like high kicking poses if you wanted to, that's not gonna be a problem. So uh, yeah, she does look really, really nice. Again, I like the texture on all of this extra armor piece. So again, they've went the aesthetic route because it, they want it to look like the source material, which is great, but there's still a lot of room for movement and articulation in there. Of course, this arm is gonna be hindered because of the hard cape, but the articulation is all there, so you can still get her arm sticking out and use that for effect pieces and stuff. So let's check out what she has got. First up, we've got Psylocke's trademark Psychic Pink Blade. Now, I think we've seen this before with Marvel Legends, but it does look very, very nice. You sort of just clip it on the wrist like so, and then you can hide it from the front. But uh, yeah, that is a very accurate representation of her power sets from the comic book page into plastic, and it does look really nice. Before I plug in the other effects, I wanted to switch out the hands. So she does come with a set of sort of more expressive open palm hands. And these new effects uh, are definitely new. We have never seen these before in the Marvel Legends line. Let's have a look. Now we've got two bubbly effect pieces. Now these are unique. They are not like the same. So they have two different unique shapes. That one sort of looks like an animal. Do you know when you look at clouds too long and they start to look like things? Like, that's what's sort of going on here. But either way, yeah, I'm not being sarcastic. It is genuinely nice to see some new effect pieces in the Marvel Legends library rather than the same ones reused over and over again. So I expect to see these a thousand times in every color of the rainbow. we got that to look forward to. So let's see how they actually look on Psylocke. And you know what? They're not too bad at all. These will definitely benefit particular characters within the Marvel Universe, especially when you get them in different colors. So uh, yeah, they basically just attach to the wrist. It is as simple as that. They just clip onto the wrist. So I guess you could flip them round if you would rather more like sort of effect on the other end if you wanted to, like a charged up power like that coming out of the body. So you can just flip them round. But yeah, they simply just clip on to the wrist and then you can just get a post up. I do always appreciate it when we get effect pieces to bring the display to life a little bit. So uh, yeah, it's nice to see something new and they just simply clip on her arm and definitely add a little bit of oomph to Psylocke, which is otherwise a great looking figure, really is. Here we have our Marvel Legends Psylocke comparison, and there's no disputing that this new Mandarin Psylocke is the best Marvel Legends Psylocke we have. It is probably just not in your preferred look, but as a Marvel Legend, it is levels above anything that has come before. We've had two versions of the Jim Lee version. It was actually a running change that was never promoted. It wasn't really a variant. It was definitely like just a running change where they sort of changed her hair to purple and she got the sort of more metallic suit, but the blue suit's better with the purple hair. So head swap those. And then we've got that repainted in the X-Force black colors essentially. So Psylocke as an Asian assassin is definitely worthy of a better articulated body with the double jointed elbows and such. So yeah, let's get a Psylocke on the new Black Widow body at least. I think she's worthy of that. But until then, uh, Psylocke in the Mandarin armor is easily our best version. I'm just curious, even though the previous ones never had the face print in tech, could we do some head swaps? Let me try the X-Force version. Oh, we were so close. Unfortunately, because it's on a dumbbell, uh, it's just a smaller peg. So the head just sits really deep and you can't really pose it up because of the way the hair sits against the cape. So yeah, an unmasked or an unhelmeted version of Psylocke on this body would have been a nice touch because I think by the end of the battle, she is completely unmasked when she's facing Wolverine. So there we have the X-Force version as it was the newest release. But let me just try the other purple haired version as well, which probably works a little bit better actually. Um, but they need the digital face printing tech to really be up to par. But yeah, the hair just doesn't sit right, unfortunately. But 
there's potential there for someone to tweak that and maybe make an unmasked version of Mandarin Psylocke um, because that would be accurate. But yeah, old Psylocke needs an upgrade regardless. New Jim Lee Psylocke. Here we have Psylocke compared to another brand new female in the line. It is of course Landra who I've just reviewed on the channel and there is definitely reuse potential here for Deathbird for the Shi'ark sort of setup. So potential for that in the future. But it's also a great start for females in 2024 because for the last two years, a female Marvel legend has topped my personal comic top 10 list with Spiral in 2022 and then Black Widow in 2023. So maybe we will see the trifecta of female Marvel legends topping the list again when all is said and done. Because so far, we're starting off hot. Some of our female Marvel legends for comparison, we've got the Phoenix Jean Grey in the green with the little head swap and then the Black Widow I've just mentioned, we absolutely need uh, a new Jim Lee Psylocke utilizing that pinless articulation that that Black Widow has. Make it happen, Hasbro. Here we have the X-Men 97 Cyclops and Wolverine, which is now on Disney+. Plus. It is returned. To be honest, no real relevance, just figures that are literally in close proximity to me from my last review. It is Gladiator and the Vulcan. Here we have the Renew Your Val Spider-Man and then the brand new Walmart exclusive Secret Empire Captain America. Again, review on the channel. And here we have the Deadly Assassin herself compared to the Marvel Legends Mandarin. Oh, oh wait. We don't have a new Marvel Legends Mandarin. What is wrong with you, Hasbro? We need a Marvel Legends Mandarin. It's been far too long. Make it happen. Let's wrap up with some of the Who crew. So here we have Frogman, Tigra, and Joe Casta, who is reading out comments from the previous Marvel Legend review. Leave a comment on this video, and she may read yours on the next one. Who have you picked today? Robert Falcone 3025 says, now we need an updated Marvel Legends Brood BAF. And last but not least is, of course, Captain Britain, who is having a little family reunion here because Psylocke is actually his sister. This is Betsy Braddock, but he probably has no idea that she's now an Asian. He just didn't know. And why would you know? That's comics for you. But anyway, finally, here we have Pal Fire Hank. <laughs> So final thoughts on this Marvel Legends Wolverine 50th anniversary two pack with Samurai Wolverine and Psylocke in her Mandarin armor or Lady Mandarin if you will. I genuinely think she is a solid representation from the source material into plastic. You can see I've actually plugged both of the effect pieces into the same arm there just to give it a little bit more oomph. And it genuinely is good to see some new effect pieces to add a bit of life to the display. All the head sculpts, all four of them in this pack are actually really, really nice. And like, even though that's not my favorite look for Psylocke, you cannot dispute it is a great Marvel Legend figure. It really is. And even the Wolverine's a better upgrade than I thought, but it's just not my favorite look for Wolverine by any means but it does make sense for him to be paired with Lady Mandarin as that's how he appeared when these two first fought so it makes sense for a two-pack so I'll, I'll, let, I'll give them a pass but they should have gave us the better claws upgrade the arms and legs that's nice but then you give us the crappy claws come on now come on now they're always so close ain't they always so close but you let me know what you think in the comments below I'm sure people are going to be very happy with Lady Mandarin early potential for figure of the year that is for sure let me know in the comments and if you like Marvel Legends, then wow, you are in the right place. Check out the videos tab, find the playlists, but most importantly, please, please, please hit that subscribe button, hit all of the notification bell, don't miss out on the video, and please hit that join button, become a channel member, either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. You can, of course, check out legendsverse.com. Always good stuff over there. If you collect legends, check them out. Links in the description. Follow me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. I'm on Twitter or X. Do I need to call it X now? Dan who reviews. I won't change my graphic though. I refuse. Anyway, I'm Dan W and I would of course see you on the next one.